We all learned the same thing in our string studies. Weight, speed, and contact point are the three variables you use to control tone. But nobody explained to you what actually connects them and makes their relationships work. Knowing these big three variables is like knowing that plants need water, sunlight, and air to grow. It's practical, but far from an explanation. Imagine if a botanist's education stopped there. They'd miss the intricate network of soil chemistry, plant type, and nutrient exchange that underlies and extends beyond those basic needs, knowledge essential for a deeper understanding. In the same way, we've cut our understanding short. We've come to think of the big three as the trinity of tone production, a closed system, complete in itself, and in doing so we've missed the deeper mechanism that actually governs the relationships between the variables. So our understanding of sound production has remained fragmented and incomplete. Today I'm going to propose a new framework that explains tone production more completely. Let's dive in. <laughs> What is this underlying mechanism? In physics, it's called the stick-slip phenomenon. And what's the unifying condition that determines how it functions? Traction. That's why I call this framework the traction model. I know it's a bold claim, but I believe the traction model could fundamentally change how we think about tone production on string instruments. It's ambitious attempting to rethink something so central to string pedagogy, and I hope you know that I don't take it lightly. Nevertheless, my goal here is to explain the new model, explore its implications, and show how it provides a more complete understanding of healthy tone production. A realization came about as I was preparing to make a video on tone production. I diagrammed the big three, weight versus speed, speed versus contact point, and contact point versus weight. The chart showed what we all know. Adding bow weight means needing more bow speed, or placing the bow closer to the bridge. I wanted to make it clear visually, so I overlaid color gradients showing how the variables added or decreased traction in the bow. With each set, I noticed a predictable pattern of traction balancing adjustments. When traction increased in one or two variables, the other variables had to be adjusted in a way that reduced traction. I then discovered the huge advantage of focusing on traction. It allowed me to incorporate other variables that were often discussed separately, like bow angle and hair contact with the string. More variables emerged. String length, string tension, string thickness, rosin, humidity, bow tension. Fortunately, it appeared that the traction model had the ability to embrace more than just three variables of tone production, and it provided a more unified way to understand it. Now don't worry, I'm not saying that all variables are equal. The big three still have the biggest influence on sound, so they're considered primary variables in this model. Since there's always a trade-off between depth and practicality, no single framework can perfectly capture everything about sound production. I see the traction model as intentionally flexible, something you can keep simple or expand depending on your goals. If you still want to think only in terms of weight, speed, and contact point, it still works at that level, while offering a more thorough understanding of the adjustments you make. But it also offers you a way to examine more variables as a part of the same interconnected system. At the end of the day, I want to share this framework so it can be examined, debated, refined, and ultimately shaped into whatever form becomes most useful for the next generation of players and teachers. Traction is the bow's ability to change the vibrational state of a string, not only to engage vibration but also to restrain or stop it. To the player, traction can be felt as resistance in the bow hand. That's an accurate sensation, but I'll continue using the word traction. It keeps the concept unified and emphasizes how all the bowing variables interact dynamically. Let's look closely at what happens hundreds of times per second when a bow moves across a string. As you can see, the bow doesn't move smoothly across the string the way it appears to. What's actually happening is a rapid series of tiny grabs and releases, hundreds of times per second, known in physics as the stick-slip phenomenon. It's like the bow is a pizzicato machine. This is the fundamental mechanism at the heart of tone production. Every variable that we manipulate affects stick-slip. This phenomenon, both the stick and the slip, are governed by the traction between the bow and the string. Too little traction, and the stick won't happen. Too much traction, and the slip will be hindered. Without the right amount of traction, the sound gets distorted. Let's take a look at the traction spectrum, which represents traction between the bow and the string from low to high. It's divided into three main zones, under traction, healthy, and over traction. Through the series, warm colors indicate higher traction and cool colors indicate lower traction. You can download a PDF of this using the link in the comments. Below the spectrum, you'll see a list of variables that influence traction and adjustments that increase or decrease it. In this video, we're simply introducing the traction spectrum and defining the two categories of variables, which are active variables and given variables. Active variables are the ones you can intentionally adjust while playing. Given variables come from the instrument or the environment, things like string tension 
tension, humidity, or the amount of rosin on the bow. These still affect traction, but you respond to them rather than control them directly. In the next two videos, we'll cover each variable, how to adjust it, and its effect on traction. They will be linked below when they're available. On the traction spectrum, the zone in the middle produces the rich resonant sound we recognize as a healthy tone. To be in this zone, the stick and the slip must stay in balance. Traction can't be too little or too much. Within the healthy zone, there are a wide range of tone colors. If you favor higher traction, using slower bow speed, greater weight, it generally creates more focus and density in the sound. Favoring faster speeds and less weight lessens traction and produces more resonance and transparency in the color. Saltasto is a color produced at this end of the healthy zone. On either side of the healthy zone lie the distortion zones, either over traction or under traction. This is where the bow has either too little or too much traction on the string. In these areas, the string's natural vibration is hindered and causes a distorted tone. If you produce too much traction between the bow and the string, the sound croaks, becomes pressed, loses resonance, and overtones. If it goes far enough in that direction, the stick slip becomes so interrupted that a phenomenon known as subharmonics happens. The string vibrates at a frequency below the fundamental pitch of the string. If you have too little traction between the bow and the string, the sound becomes thin, glassy, and or filled with unwanted high partials. Also, the bow contact point is less stable because it's not anchored through traction. A wandering contact point can be a symptom of too little traction. Sometimes a player will intentionally enter this zone though. For example, Ponticello is an effect produced by intentionally playing too close to the bridge and therefore too little traction. Due to real world constraints, you'll notice some of the variables are tied more directly to either tone color or dynamics. For instance, bow weight is tied to dynamic in a way that the other variables are not. It's impossible to play forte with a light bow or piano with a heavy one. The same generalization can't be made for the other variables. So as you probably know, I think it's time to understand and teach tone production in a more complete way. The traction model puts traction at the center, connecting the big three variables with others like bow angle, hair contact, string length, all within one unified framework. If you use this approach from the start, you don't just memorize rules, you develop an intuitive sense of how the bow and the string interact, making learning faster, more consistent, and more precise. In the next two videos, we'll explore the variables in detail and see how they fit into the traction model framework. I'd love to hear your thoughts in the comments. How can this idea be expanded? Are there ideas you'd like clarified? And if you know someone who might find this interesting, go ahead and share it with them. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.